Good morning. So welcome to Hawkshaven, where it's, we call it the U of U University. We teach, uh, we teach people how to be free. We teach people how to recognize some principles of self-ownership. Teach people how to be mindful of their actions. We teach yoga. We don't teach beer yoga. I don't think beer is that great. <laughs> but we teach how to how to create a balanced centered life. A meditative life. One that you don't need a vacation from. When I was in busyness, I needed a vacation because I was stressing myself out. I almost died because of the stress. Chasing that American dream put me in the hospital. Yeah, only for a couple days. Three days. They didn't know what was wrong with me. I was getting sick every day for like five years. And it would just be every morning, I would just puke just a little bit. They did an MRI. We had some big winds here the other day and uh, broke down some of these trees. It's nuts. Anyway, yeah, um, so modern medicine couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. And so, um, I was suffering and I didn't know what the problem was. Well, the only problem was, was I was allowing stress to be something I was allowing in my life. And uh, if, if we do that, we're giving our energy to something that we don't want. This is one of my favorite places to come for a little walk. Sometimes I even come here shortly after four o'clock and of course by climbing uphill you surely get an altitude adjustment, right? All right, let's Look around here for a second. We have, oh shit. <laughs> we nearly had a funny film videos. It's just a cool little canyon. We get a waterfall right up here when the snow melts off or we get a real heavy rain. It's pretty cool. Sometimes it's so quiet here, you'll be sitting and you can hear the <laughs> of the raven's wings as they fly through the air. Pretty neat for some area heard it, I was like, what the hell is that? Anyway, we were talking about freedom. And we are talking about how we shouldn't, I mean, if we're all created equal, who has authority over anybody else? Who, I can't, I can't just come up to you and tell you, hey, 
um, go go beat up that person and throw them in a cage. And you'd be like, well, wait a minute, what'd they do? Oh, they 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 broke one of my rules. You'd be like, oh, well, what what was the rule? Did they hurt somebody? No, 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 they didn't hurt anybody. They just they just broke one of my rules. So I'd like them uh, punished and you know and kill them if you have to. But I I, re I really want them thrown in a cage. So. Okay, well, the only person that's going to do that is somebody who's willing to say, like, oh, I'm just doing my job, you know, um, I'm just going to extort you and, you know, probably initiate force on you for uh, for money. <laughs> um, but that's, that's kind of a normal thing in today's society. And, you know, I was talking to a guy, I was talking to a guy the other day, he, uh, the, the conversation came to tattoos, and uh, I, I I believe that um, people have cars that they decorate the way they they most desire them. Um, people have homes that they decorate in a, in a way that they feel uh, works for them. People decorate everything in their lives except for their bodies. Well, some some people do. You know, there's there's some pretty significant body modification uh, going on. I'm I'm not that far into it. I mean, you know, I, I like I like tattoos. I like having. I believe our skin's a canvas. So, anyway, I was talking to a talking to a guy the other day, and he uh, he talking about tattoos. And I said, well, you know, I'm I'm wanting to get uh, free will across my knuckles. And he says, well, aren't aren't those illegal? And I laughed. I was like, what? What the hell are you talking about? And he says, yeah. He says, I, I, I think it's illegal to tattoo anything below your wrist. And I said, well, I said, I, I don't know. I said, maybe most people don't suggest tattooing below your wrist because then you can cover it up with, like, a long sleeve shirt. But, um, yeah, it's like, I, I don't really think that... I don't think that anybody can can, can control if I, if, if I take burnt wood and I mash it into a fine powder and I add a little bit of water to it and I mix it up really good and then I use a porcupine quill or um, an agave you know uh, spear tip or a, or a needle or a series of needles or even if that series of needles is connected to a machine that rapidly injects the needle into your skin, like a tattoo uh, gun. I don't think anybody has the right to tell me I can't do that. And he's like, well, you know, you, well, you'd probably have to go to a business, right, you know, to get that done. And I said, well, no, I said, I know friends that um, have invested like, you know, $100 and they've gotten equipment that enables you to, you know, tattoo skin. I said, but, but besides, even if it was a business, if, if they're providing a service of coloring skin and I, I seek the service of coloring my skin voluntarily and, and they're not being coerced or forced into tattooing my skin, who has the right to come in between two human beings when we're all equal and tell you, you can't do that. I'm not hurting anybody. I mean, if if I if I screw myself up, that's that's my own fault. I mean, I I I was very lucky to have a a really great mom. She um, really taught me cause and effect. You know, she taught me, hey, if you want to be a little asshole, your ass <laughs> might get spanked. And um, and it wasn't a might about it. I mean, if I was a little asshole, you know, I, I got a spanking. And so I quit being a little asshole. You know, that's what we need, just cause and effect. But, but, that, but that's natural law, and that's being suppressed by man's law. And man's law is corruptible because sometimes there's money involved when you start regulating things, when you start controlling things. And if you're controlling things, I would see that as an opposition to free will, which, from what I understand, 
Um, you know, some people believe that there's a guy sitting up on a cloud, and his name's God, and he's a guy, and he's he's white, of course, because I'm white, and of course we have uh, seemingly built God in man's image, not the uh, other way around, failing to recognize that God is in all of nature, all of natural things. So to say he's man is an awful limiting belief. I see God as an acronym. You know, as a kid, I, you know, it's like, yeah, I don't know, God's this being that created everything, and yeah, we don't know. Yeah, we don't know. Just believe what, what's in this book right here. And dependent upon what area of the planet you were born on, it's going to be a different book and a different language of people doing the same thing to their kids, spreading things they don't really know. We have too many knowers and not enough seekers. But anyway, um, acronym for God. What if, what if God is big G, big O, big D? And it's growth, oneness, and divinity. You know, and then, then you'd, you'd say, okay, well, what, what's, okay, so if everything's an acronym, if everything's an acronym, right? we got a lot of acronyms. We got, you know, we got the FBI, we got the CIA, we got the USA, we got the TGIF, we got the WAF Watt and Dilla Gaff and Snafu and what? I mean, we got a lot of acronyms going on around here. So what if the uh, polarity of God is Satan? And what if Satan is seeing anything? as negative so like I, I just um, recently experienced a separation that I I wasn't um, I wasn't planning on but when you recognize everything that happens in your life as growth it happens for you instead of to you So when you can when you can gain the lesson, when you can find the lesson or the humor in what's happened in your life, you'll you'll find growth, and that would be towards God, you know, growth, expansion, um, breaking previously held barriers or or beliefs that I mean, you know, at one at one time people were like, there ain't no way. Like anybody could run a mile faster than four and a half minutes. But now that people know that people can do it, I mean, you're finding high school kids all over the country that can do it. I mean, there, there, it's, it's, it's not something that it can't be done. It's something that anybody who's a runner kind of knows somebody who can do it. I think there's other things in our culture that we're living in um, that aren't as healthy. I mean, we're still using petroleum fuel to uh, power combustion motors when we have a lot of other technologies available. I mean, you know, hydrogen uh, can be extracted right from uh, water, and there's many different sources of water. I mean, the ocean, yeah, that, that, that's a pretty big source of water. Um, yeah, we can we can be extracting hydrogen from the water, and that might even, well, on a micro scale, it'd be contributing to lowering the levels of the ocean and uh, giving us a clean alternative energy to be burning in the combustion motors that are already existing on today's roads. You know, people have people have. Uh, there's some really smart people out there. They've, they've built devices. I, I believe I've, I've heard of, or I've seen at least pretty satisfying evidence of uh, devices that, that create hydrogen. But then they're, they're purchased by the big companies that would rather people spend the money on petroleum. And I mean, you know, you, you can't blame them. It's a free market, kind of. I mean, you know, it, well, it's not really a free market. It's a lot of regulation. 
You gotta ask permission on everything. But I mean, you know, you get a good idea. Somebody says, hey dude, I'll buy that idea from you. How much you gonna buy that idea from you for? You know, we're, we're willing to give you like $30 million for that idea. And it's like, huh. I was a guy that was scraping by, paycheck to paycheck. I was tinkering on stuff out of DIY and junkyard finds in my garage or in my basement. And I got this little device built and, and now somebody's going to pay me $30 million. I'm never going to have to work again. All right. <laughs> Somebody else is going to have to come up with this shit and, um, on their own. And, you know, it, you can't you can't blame anybody. I mean, it's their life. I mean, if I, if I controlled them, that would be me saying that I own them. Well, who owns you? If you're not controlling your actions based on your morality and not hurting anybody, I mean, if you if you don't create a victim with your actions, who should be able to control what you do, what you say? how you act I mean if people are acting <laughs> if people are acting like little assholes um, we can ostracize them we can boycott their business if we don't think people or, or corporations or business you know businesses are doing a, a good job well we shouldn't support them we shouldn't give them our money because if we give them our money then we're telling them hey we want more of what you're giving so if we stop supporting the things that we don't want and start supporting the things that we do want. You know, re recognize that we have we have the power of the internet. No other time in history have we had this global level of, or, you know, yeah, global level of connect connectivity to be able to share efficient ideas and ways of doing things. You know, we don't have to rely on moving next door to somebody and and hoping that um, they they've got good ideas that you can learn from. I mean, shit, you go right on, uh, well, I call YouTube, YouTube University. I mean, I, I've learned so much on YouTube. I mean, you're, you're getting documentaries, and you're getting um, people's lifetime works. Um, talk, you know, and they'll, they'll, they'll sit and they'll talk about it for 10 hours or something. And I mean, if you, if you really pay attention to what somebody's willing to tell you in 10 hours about their life study, you're going to gain some knowledge. It's the apocalypse. It's the, the the unveiling of information. It's allowing us to recognize the problems in the world and the solutions to those problems. And what we give power to, we'll get more of. So if we uh, look to the solutions, and and they and most of them exist. Uh, you know, here at Hawkshaven, we're reshaping the landscape so that it um, becomes productive again. And uh, we've learned from the beaver that if you hold water to the land, things things uh, thrive. I mean, we're out in the middle of the desert. And we've got elderberry trees growing. We've got currant bushes growing. We've got blackberries and raspberries. And we've got all sorts of food growing all over the place. We've got sumacs that are popping up. Just um, we, we started holding water to the land, and everything just started growing. And other models that I'm copying have uh, have resulted in reforesting areas let me zoom into that a little bit hillsides that look like that have been completely reforested in less than one decade and in one decade they've been able to recharge the aquifer by holding the water to the land and allowing it to soak in you know a healthy landscape absorbs quickly but releases slowly and if you can get that water locked into like these little ditches and uh, catch basins, well then the aquifer recharges to a point that the, the springs, they start flowing again. And instead of getting a, a rush of water when it um, rains or the snow melts, it gives you a slow stream of water year-round or near year-round. And they've been able to recharge aquifers in areas that hadn't seen um, year-round streams for hundreds of years. And they're able to recharge those aquifers in less than a decade. So, I mean, the solutions to the problems exist. 
but we're not putting any energy to them. We keep perpetuating what hasn't worked for a long time. And if we want change, we need to be that change. Mahatma Gandhi, he says, be the change you wish to see. Because you know, you're, you're the only one. You're the only one that can control you. And if you can control you and you do it in a peaceful way, and you just don't initiate force on anybody, that, you know, that's that's being peaceful. You can you can think anything you want. I mean, your thoughts don't hurt anybody unless uh, unless you know they're uh, offended by something that they can't control, and they and and it isn't even physically harming them. So we need we need to recognize that there's some there's some room for growth, and here at uh, U of U at Hawks Haven, it's what we teach. So like, share, subscribe, and this is the Free Will Channel, and helping us reconnect to our potential or, clo or, or closer to our potential. Once we get people not so focused on just surviving, we'll start sort of thriving.